first one is just uh, uke. So we're doing uke, uke kata uh, for kind of like a looping type punch. And dropping and making sure it's solid. If you can press, to try to press on my face. Shouldn't take any strength. So one, two, three, so on and so forth. Mind the angle. The angle in your range is what's important. Um, you know, not moving straight back. But the drill is you and your partner get one side of the line. It'd probably be easiest to everybody to start on the same side so you don't eventually, eventually we're going to cross the streams. But I'm coming at him. Right. Okay. And work down the line, come back. It's more of this type of flowing and opening them up. Right. Just using the form. Okay. Right. So I'm just trying to get him to open up just a little bit. Uh, so, so that's Jodan. There's also Gedan, where it's punching like to the ribs. Um, but also Ura the Motes. Right, that's fine. Either one's fine. And that's the thing is, that's why the distance and angle is so important. This is not about blocking. Uke is about blocking and not getting hit. This is about creating openings. So even if I miss or I misjudge, I'm okay. So, Right. And also gate on. So you inside, outside, Joe Don, gate on. And back to the mind. So this one you can play around a little bit with. Uh, just punch. Depending on the distance. If I end up going in kind of shallow, then it's like jockeying. If I'm a little bit further than maybe Koshi. If I'm a little bit further than Kote. Right? If I'm real close, it comes up to here. Right? So you can play with distance, um, but Dakinuke is now your, your block as a strike. So we've got the same thing, uh, Jodan, the inside, Jodan is the outside, Get onto the inside, get onto the outside. But you're picking points. If you go to the outside, right, then you've got Hoshi, it's like near the elbow, not on the elbow, you might break your hand, but actually there, or hitting the back of the hand. Uh, if it's get onto the outside, you can sometimes get like a, well, I guess this would be like a chew on, get nagare. Or like hammer fist his wrist or his hand. Or right here. Um, questions? So you pick the points, like hit the points with a point. All right? Don't just kind of like when you think, oh, punch him in the face. Really, you should think punch him like on Jinchu or punch him on Hadome. Right? Don't just kind of aim. You try to hit a, a weak point. Uh, so. Back in the <coughs> inside Jodan, outside Jodan, inside Gaidan, outside Gaidan. Remember to return the command. Right? Because that sets up any other guards on the Okay, the third one comes. If I take one step, he's going to run me over. It's about the angle and the distance, it's not about one step. So if I have to. Do this to get my distance, that's fine. It's about the angle and the distance, not about do it once, twice, once at a time. I'll run out of room. Right? Because you have to adjust depending on your opponent. If he's taller and he's got more reach, then you're gonna have to move more. But the angle is still the same. And you move however you need to move to the appropriate distance. First one is have my parry. 
and all it is is enough, like punch, and just enough to move it. What I don't want to see is this, and trying to keep contact. Usually people end up twisting their body, so it's just enough, once more, just enough that he doesn't hit me, and then this, let's go. Right. So, so first one is going back. I'm just getting used to that. Uh, back to the outside, back to the inside. If you go to the inside and back, you have to add a little extra. <coughs> Check that back hand. You're always checking where the next thread is coming from. Then going forward is a little trickier because you're going down line. So I'm like here, so we kind of have to reset a little weird, or he can reset. But like you can back a pair just to set up the next punch. Otherwise, we'll start circling. So it's like one, and then he can reset. Two. So you're kind of going forward, but then you reset to step back so that you can practice parrying and moving forward, if that makes sense. And then the same thing, like, uh, if you move forward to the inside, which is risky, because here, I'm really close to this danger. You still have to guard that. So check that hand. Check that hand. This is kind of an outside pair now instead of how it works. Like, yeah, using the outside of the hand rather than the inside of the hand. So instead of this way and checking the back hand, it's this way and checking the back hand. So now you're pivoting. Right? Checking, checking. And if you go to the outside on this, then it's just here, right? Because the next one is striking. The other hand is doing damage. Okay. So the lead hand, if you're on the outside, can do damage. You possibly could do it on the inside, too, <clears> if <throat> your timing is right, right? Strike. But I prefer to make myself safe first. Check that hand. And do damage the other one. So you're just... Pivoting into each one's in the line. Pivoting into each one's line. Right. Which tells you where you can go. Same thing. On the outside, you've got to still cross that line. Which tells me where I can go. So if I'm like setting up and just being lazy about Kamai, I don't know where I'm going. Like I have less of a gauge to figure out what I'm doing. Like each one's not a pose, it's functional. Very, very functional. And you might have each one you like, not just, you know, sometimes they say you'll see and do this, and sometimes you not say they do each one you like this. Because they're protecting first and measuring. What's the distance? I'm in the distance, so he's got a step to hit me. I read that through the posture. Right? Now I can choose which way I go. Right? Oh. Your Kamai is your first level of defense. It tells you. Where you're safe and where you're not safe. Then, if you need, you use your feet to move your body out of the way, and your hands are your insurance policy. So, Kamai is keeping your eyes on the road. Aishibaki, Taishibaki helps you not get into a wreck. And then, hands are there in case you do get into a wreck, you've got insurance. Right. So, the hands are really just in case. They're not meant really, your, your, your goal is not necessary to stop whatever the attack is. The hands are you know, just in case you screwed up. Maybe you misread or maybe the person's drunk and can't throw a straight punch. Like he can't throw where he thinks he's gonna throw. Or maybe he goes to punch and he's, you know, like, like say he's aiming for your head but he's drunk. So he's already uncoordinated, and if you didn't move, he would have missed. 
but because you don't know that, you have to move. But maybe you move right into where he's going to hit you because he couldn't throw a decent punch to begin with. Does that make sense? And so your hands are there just in case. Or maybe it's something that's good, but they, as they're punching, they slip and it changes the trajectory and hits you. So even though you were moving out of the way of where he intended to, because he slipped, now his punch changed direction, trajectory. And so your hands are there in case. Right? But they, they're not meant to stop him. Like, they're meant to get information, check things, to stop the next attack, or to open something up so that you can counter. So, like, when people miss, if you miss your target when you're striking, it will tire you out more than if you hit it and more than if they blocked it. Because then you've got the energy to rebound. If, like, you miss, it's like you have to pull it back on your own. Like, it's more tiring to miss. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Uh, so the hands are just instruments. So you've got to think in terms of first in terms of doing these type of things without your hands at all, right? Then you add the hands because, like, I don't trust myself to like do punches to do the hot seems to say thing and just like let it drift past me and count. I'm not that good. I don't trust myself to do that. I don't trust him to punch straight enough either, right? So, like, that's why this is there. I'm not really stopping much of anything unless I had to. But this makes, this confirms to my body I didn't get hit. So it's like neurological information. I didn't get hit, so I'm good. Right? Uh, so continue pairing with, that, with the outside hand, checking the front hand, or pairing and getting ready to cause damage. Couldn't take the distance or you didn't have room to angle, right? And if you don't do anything, you're going to get hit. So this is good against, really against like power shots. So like a cross or a, or a hook. So we're here, maybe he throws a cross, and you cover up here. And if you're lucky, maybe he'll punch your elbow and break his hand. <coughs> or if he like loops one. And the other hand is guarding too, because you know there's another threat, or I get a chance to counter. But the idea is, like grab the back of your head. So you got like the center line here, right? And try to bring your elbow to that kind of center line. That way you can still see him. And your other hand is ready. Most people, the most common thing I see people do that's poor this is they go here. I'm talking, if you close the outside eye, I can't see him anymore. That's a good test for this. Because if I do this and he throws a cross, he's still going to punch me. Now do it. Yeah. So cut your face in half. Your forearm is trying to protect the temple, the shoulders, protecting the side of the neck, and, jaw, and you, you kind of weld your arm and your head together. So if he has a strong hit, like it, it's less concussive, so I don't get that whiplash motion and rattle right my brain. Uh, so for the drill, just to practice reps, uh, I'll do it with open hand. I'll come in, big looping thing, and I'm gonna give him some pressure, right? These steps. <clears throat> I'm trying to give him, hey, he's not go forward so he can feel that. So, yeah. Okay. So, this is when you can't get away. Like for the UK, okay, just for safety, say, keep open hands. But you can choose which type of punch you throw. And uh, Tori can choose which kind of defense he uses. Does he want to parry? Does he want to do Dakin UK? Does he want to just do UK? So, it's free. But the same concept as a Sendomundo, where, okay, I'm going to give you this attack. And you. Do you remember to not just go, ah, or do you use a junk gay or this thing? What names have you heard this thing called? I've heard Rhino Block. I've also heard like Carriage Block or something like that. Vertical there's, Elbow Shield. Yeah, there, there's like 50 different names, but the easiest way to remember it is just a comfort of your hair. Okay. That's it. There's a problem for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I know. Yeah. But it's just like, ah, cool. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's free choice. Okay. Your posture. How do you position yourself tactically? And there's various ways to do it. Uh, so, there's any guesses on the second line of defense? Distance. Your distance in your, your range. Can I move in such a way that even if I misread, I'm still safe? Then your third line of defense. Hands? Your hands and your feet. Like, because we, we aren't, we aren't going, we're not doing uh, kick action yet. But, yeah. Your Kamai is your first line. The distance is the second line. And the distance is not necessarily a range. It's where you position yourself relative to the opponent. And then your hands are your third line. So like the punches. Okay. I'm definitely within range. But I'm positioning myself in such a way that I'm still okay. And I'm positioning myself in such a way I can counter him. If he goes to kick me. We've got his balance. Right? Same thing. So we're here. But also, like, I can hit him, right? So, hand your third one. But don't depend on him. Because, like, if he's faster than you, then maybe you don't, aren't fast enough, right? So, it's like insurance. But those are like, yeah, those are most of the, most of the, I would say probably even getting out of basics, but the various ways to use your angling and your hands for defense. These are the things you're gonna like, various ways you're gonna need them so that you can defend yourself against an attack. And that doesn't count like doing like Yoko Ruki type stuff. We're doing like the Naisei warm up, or we're doing Ken Hapo. Or just like doing a basic punch on the pad, it should never be like a thing where you're just going through the motions. <clears throat> right? Otherwise, it's wasted training time. Like you have to mentally folk, like have full concentration and focus every time. Right? That's that's like the only way you're gonna notice, like the only way you'll feel and notice what you're doing. And if you need to make a self correction, you'll see it easier. Like some, some things you do, you can self-correct. Right? And you should try that. You should try to self-correct. And then some things you, as much as you try, you still don't see. Like it's hardest, hardest to like find your own faults. It's easy to find faults in someone else. It's the most difficult to find them in yourself. Right? Because usually it's like unconscious or habitual and you're not even aware that, that you're doing it. Like, like we're talking about little ticks and stuff that we sometimes do in training. Where you know, like, so Matt's kind of, he's getting better. He had this one where it'd be like every time we'd start the technique, he'd be like, he'd like tell you to shut up and then he'd bounce a little bit. <laughs> and he wasn't even aware that he was doing it. Like, uh, <coughs> at the last year of Southeast Takai, someone asked, a substance and say like, should he would always set up like this? And he's like, should I point the fingers or not? And the response, well, it was kind of like, well, it depends on if you know why you're doing it. If you don't know why you're doing it, then no, it makes no sense. And so there's this like, he talked about this. I heard him talking about it two or three times. He's like saying, if you can't control your fingers, you can't control your body. Right? If you're not aware that you're doing the thing, then. It's one of the points of having Kamai have a form and not just being like, yeah, I'm in Kamai. <laughs> like if, it, if you're just standing there because that's what the, the art says to do, you're just posing and it has, it has no utility. Like it has to be set. Every part serves a purpose and it's very intentional. Because then, like, if you have that, then you know when you're not doing something. And so you can adjust your Kamai to create an opening to 
draw the person in. But like if you don't even know you have the opening, you can't close it off. So you that's part of Kyojutsu is you you create an opening that's an actual opening. Like it's not like like creating an opening that you hope appears that you hope it appears to be an opening. Like if he if the opponent is very skillful, he'll know that you're baiting. Right? It has to be an opening that like you you create it, but it, it seems like you don't even know it's there. Like that's why it has to be a real open. Like we do things like kunokata, or you know, you do something like that. You have to create that impression with your your whole body, right? That that, that it's real, that you actually believe it. Like if you don't believe it, there's no way the opponent will believe it. <coughs> right? It's really difficult to do, and not not saying that I can do it, <laughs> but it's really difficult to do. So, it's not this. So, guard, but there's another weapon. Let's say, you gotta think where this next one coming from. Alright? So, guard. Then you can come in. So, say he, yeah, go ahead. So here, and he punches twice, right? Because it's, <clears throat> boom, I'm here, bah, right? Okay. Bah. So you slip the first one. I'm sorry, the second one. Then you got options. So guard yourself as you come back in. Like even here, I'm, if I moved early and he went to punch, that's fine. You got another guard. Hit him with himself. So check. Slip. You got a guard. Then how you hit can change. If you want to do like the warm up, right? Boom. Or you can just step. If you're close, yeah. Ah, see him with the elbow. Okay, go hit the warm up. You just slip. That's, that's the tight to it. That's the tight spot here. The hand spot here. Just close to this. It's okay. Make sure I don't get hit. And I'm still guarded here. So, <clears throat> kind of connected to what we did earlier. Add a parry, but just to be safe. Think about this, it's like you're slipping, you're parrying. It's also, come on. So if you're having trouble like figuring out how to twist, something that might help is you parry that. And it's not a heavy parry, it's really just, where's this fist? Okay, make sure I don't be in the same spot. It's really a light touch. And you, if the steps, if you if you got a, a sense for the steps, like one step, one step two, step three, then you start scanning for the next attack. So the first punch comes. I'm kind of scanning here. The second one comes. Uh, now I'm scanning here. Right. But then you get a chance, like where he doesn't really have many options. So, uh, so try it with a parry on the second one. 